and welcome back to this second short video where I'm breaking down the complex concepts of chronology into smaller composite parts. Last time, in episode number one, we were looking at sequencing, which is that base concept that everything else is going to build on. So if you haven't watched that, please do go and watch it first. The description has the link. Today we're going to be talking about scales, more specifically why having a scale on timelines is so important. What we're doing is following pretty much the same pattern as last time to make sure that the episodes are consistent and easy to unpick and understand. In a second I will load a powerpoint and guide you through a couple of examples of timelines. You will notice that they are the same timelines as last week. I'm doing that deliberately because it allows me to show that there's much more than just a sequence to the different timelines. Scale. A scale is a set of numbers that helps to quantify objects. In this case, it allows us to quantify the chronology more accurately. What I'll do is I'll show you a couple of examples in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. Some of the timelines are the same as last week, and I've done that deliberately to show what you can do with timelines when you think about which concept you want to deliberately stress. Let's start with Key Stage 1. You'll notice it says Chronological Framework in the top left hand corner. So this is setting out that overall picture of history which is really important for children to understand and develop. Now, all of my timelines for Key Stage 1 start with now. I call it an anchor point. It also ties to the ELG of now and past. Let's say that the first history topic was all about changes within living memory. Toys, home, shopping, other way to cover that of course. That's a duration of time and you'll notice that on my timeline it covers the, across the scale. Then let's say the next topic is the Great Fire of London. Here it is. It's much further in the past and we can explain that by saying it's much further away from now. Think about the scale. It allows me to represent that deliberately and accurately. And on this particular example, the scale is in units of 10 years. So it allows the children to count in tens if their mathematical understanding is developed enough to be able to do that. Without the scale, I couldn't show this interval so deliberately. Now, please don't get me wrong. You can absolutely build this timeline using multilink cube. That's why I use the squares. But however you do it make sure it's consistent and the teacher is placing the event on that scale to really ensure we've got that level of accuracy. Here's the internal narrative and once again it's Amelia Earhart. Think about what the scale allows me to represent. The childhood is a duration of time therefore it's positioned on the scale as a bar and each of those arrows happened at a certain age. Because we have that scale we can say what that age was. On to key stage two. Our overall narratives, that's the big picture of British history. And this is the one we saw last week. The positioning of the scale is really helpful here. It allows me to get the children to imagine drawing vertical lines down from it and say, what was going on in the year 2000 BC? It also allows me to ask comparative questions such as, which of the periods that we've studied has the longer duration? I mean, clearly it's prehistory, absolutely. And it extends far further into the past than we could ever show on a timeline because it's so enormous. But without that scale, it's much harder to represent and interpret that data in the same way as when we're working with graphs. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna zoom in on the internal narrative of the Roman period. Once again, for consistency, the red bar represents Roman Britain in this particular case. And you'll notice it's really consistent in terms of what we saw for Amelia Earhart. We've got the arrows appearing for singular points, and we've got the bars that are representing something that occurred over a duration of time. Now, be honest, did you notice the scale had changed? because quite often children won't notice unless we explicitly tell them. Therefore, the first pointer when you're interpreting this timeline is, take a look at the scale. What do you notice? Oh, it's changed. That's right, we're looking at a shorter duration in much more depth. 
Okay, on to the summary. Number one, the scale needs to be clear and workable. Hopefully the reason for that is obvious, but just in case. If the children can't count in that number, then actually understanding what it represents is going to be harder. Consider the children's mathematical understanding. Would I get children to position events on that scale? I might do, but I need as an adult to make sure it's done accurately and I don't spend half a lesson on something that I could do in seconds. It should support the accurate depiction of events. The reason it needs to do that is because it's going to help the children organise their understanding of that person's life, that period of history. And if the scale changes, make sure the children know because quite often they won't notice unless we make it explicit. And there we go. Hopefully what came across is how simple scales can be and the fact that in Key Stage 1 we don't have to put numbers on them, but we can if we wish. Also, I made reference to quite a few other chronological concepts there, specifically interval and duration. They are the subjects of the next video. The reason I'm using that vocabulary accurately here is because they're totally linked, quite frankly. If we don't have the scale, representing a duration and an interval accurately is much harder. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully you'll give the channel a subscribe, and the next one should be out in about a week. Thanks very much.